G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam, and in this video I'm going to talk about the IIF, or inline if statement in AMP script, show you how it works and how you can use it in your emails in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So the inline if statement is a beautifully simple and diverse function that you can use in your AMP script. I'll show you what I mean when I jump into documentation here, we scroll right down to the very bottom, jump into our utilities section and we can find the IIF function. So IIF, or inline if statement, is a very simple minified version of the standard M script if statement. You can see here by the function properties, it just requires three ordinals. The first is our expression, just like an if statement. The second and third are the true and false returned values if the condition evaluates as true or false. So let me show you how it works inside of one of our emails. So inside Marketing Cloud, we can jump into Content Builder. Let's make ourselves a brand new email message. For our email, we'll choose a template based message and choose a nice blank page and go next. We'll call this email script IIF for our function for today. And we'll go next to start building our email. To start with, let's drag a HTML section onto our email just like that. We can use this HTML section to try out our inline if statement. So to start with, our inline if starts with a percent percent equals and then IIF with our function equals and then percent percent. And the inline if statement contains three ordinals. We have one, two, and three. The first one, of course, was that condition. So we can write ourselves an if statement condition. For example, I could write is one equal to zero. Now, if that is correct, then the true statement here will express itself. I can say it's going to be true. If it's not true though, which of course one is not equal to zero, then the false statement here will paste and I'll go false. So what I can do is I can put some text at the front. I can say the result is equal to, and there's my statement. I'll just make a quick uh, subject line here. I'll go test, done. And we can test out our email on the next button in the preview and test screen. So once we've chosen a data extension, I can go into my data extensions. I've got a nice sample one here. Go into my sample rows. Let's choose Astro. All right, so there we go. Our result is equal to false. And the reason for that is back in our email, we said is one equal to zero, which of course it's not. Therefore, the result is false. If we wrote the inline if statement to say one is equal to one, checking to see if the value is equal to one, we can test that out. And of course, because one is equal to one, we should get the result is equal to true, which it is, fantastic. So the great thing about the inline if statement is it achieves the same thing as the full size if statement, but in a much shorter form, which is particularly useful for outputting copy or text like we have here today. Let me show you what I mean. A full size if statement would go something like this. We create our AMP script code block and say if something, then we will do the true version else we'll do the false version and then end if. Now to reproduce the code below, we could say if one is equal to one, then we would have to set a variable to be equal to our value of true. And then below the same thing again to set the value to be equal to false. And then to output that value, we'd have to go back below here and go result equals and then print out that value using the percent percent %v function something just like this. So as you can see, to produce the text value of true or false based on the condition, it's much easier to use the inline if statement. Now normally in your code, it wouldn't be a problem. This can be very useful if you're trying to write some shorthand code to produce some very simple outcomes. For example, testing if someone has a preferred name or perhaps testing a value within their customer data. So let me show you how we can do that. If we have a look at my custom data. I can jump over to my data extension we can see here that I've got a few records and I've got an email opt-in value. What I might want to do is to produce a text output in my email based on their true or false values in the email opt-in field. So what I can do is back into my AMP script here, I can use my inline if statement to say, are you opted in? Now, if you are, I can test that value. So I can straight away say, let's go and use my sample rows data and we'll check on their email opt-in value. So if email opt-in is equal to true, we can use the text and say, yes, you are. However, if the email opt-in value is not equal to true, then you are not opted 
in. Just like that. Let's try it out. So go next onto our send and preview and try it out on our subscribers. Now our first record will be Astro, who is not opted in. So I opted in, you are not opted in. Fantastic. If I go back to my data extension though, let's choose some new values. So I'll go in, let's have a look at someone who's got a true opt-in. I can use Brandy the Marketer. I'll go select, and is Brandy opted in? Yes, yes you are. Fantastic. So let me show you two really common applications of the inline AMP script that you can use. First of all, I often see the inline AMP script used as a personalization option. For example, hi first name. Now the problem is, in our current data, hi first name expects that to be a first name value, which is not always true. So we need to put some AMP script in to make sure we have a first name value for our subscribers, otherwise say something like hi there or hi trailblazer. So what we can do is use our inline if statement. So rather than saying hi first name, we say hi percent percent and write in our inline if statement. Now our condition is going to be to make sure that the first name value has been set. So we can say if not empty and put in our first name value. So if first name is not empty, then it's going to do what? We have a value, so let's just use the value of first name. Fantastic. But if first name is empty, we haven't got a first name value for the subscriber, what should we put? Let's put Trailblazer. So we're going to say hi Trailblazer if the name is not filled in, otherwise we'll use their first name value. Let's try it out. So we'll go next and we'll try it out on our subscribers. Now I'm pretty sure that all of our subscribers have a first name, so hi Einstein because Einstein has a first name. You can go back and hi Astro because of course Astro has a first name. Let's change our code a little bit and we can make it a little bit different. Since we have a first name value, let's instead test to see if the first name value is equal to Astro. So if the first name value is equal to Astro, oops, Astro, then we're going to use Astro's first name. Otherwise, we'll use the word Trailblazer. So for Astro's record, we'll say, hi Astro. Otherwise, we'll say, hi Trailblazer. Let's try it out. For Astro's record, we're going to say, hi Astro, fantastic. And for Einstein, hi Trailblazer, perfect. So the other use case I see a lot of is the inline AMP script used on preference centers to check a checkbox. Let me show you how that works. Often on your preference pages, you'll have a form. Inside that form, you'll have an input field. The input field will have a type of something like checkbox. Checkbox, and that checkbox will have a pre-checked value. So it might be something like subscribe to emails. You can see here the checkbox is not checked, but if we put the word in checked, it then ticks the checkbox for us. Awesome. So we could use our email opt-in value to see if we can put the word checked in. So what we can do is say percent percent equals inline if, and we can see if the email opt-in is equal to true, then they are subscribed to receive emails. So we can put in the value of checked. However, if the inline AMP script value for uh, the email opt-in is false, and they are not checked, therefore they are not subscribed to emails, so don't pre-check that tick box. All right, let's try it out. So I'll go into my email preview, and for our records that have a true to subscribe, they should have a ticked subscribe value here. Of course, Einstein is not subscribed to email, so it's not pre-ticked. You can go forward, and if I find a subscriber here with an email opt-in of true, such as Brandy, it's been pre-ticked, perfect. You go back one, Appy was false, not ticked, Randy was true and therefore ticked. And there we have it. Just a handful of ways you can use the inline if statements on your cloud pages and emails to improve your personalization. I hope you enjoyed this quick five minute intro to the inline if statements. If you have, please let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like the video. And also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel so that you receive notifications when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud videos.